boy, this is going to be so boss. I mean, to watch two people who haven't spoken to each other in over 15 years see each other for the first time. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I get goosebumps just thinking about it, guys. You must be ready to split a gut, Judd. What are you going to say to your son when you see him again, huh? I'm hoping he'll let me say anything. Anything at all. Oh, come on. I, I know that you two haven't been on the best of terms, but after all, you are his father, and, and I can't help but believe that when he sees you again, he's going to run at you with open arms. Well, it may be a little awkward at first, though, Bert. You didn't tell Nathan I was looking for him. I mean, he doesn't know we're coming today, right? Like you promised me. Now, he doesn't know a thing, Jed. We located your son without ever having to talk to him. You know, as far as he's concerned, we're just in for some gas. Morning. Morning. How you doing? Are you Nathan Warwick? Why? Well, because if you are, we got a big surprise for you. What's he doing? We don't know yet. He's, uh, he's still in surgery. If it's any consolation, I think I might have figured out what happened this morning and why. What? Did Judd Warwick tell you why he wanted to kill his own son? To begin with, his name isn't Judd Warwick. It's Judd Thompson. The man he hired you to find wasn't his son. He was the man convicted of raping and murdering Judd's daughter 12 years ago. What? Rape and murder? What's this guy doing working in a gas station? He's out of prison. He was released two months ago after serving ten years at San Quentin. You mean to tell me he only... he only served ten years for rape and murder? That's outrageous. Apparently that's what Judd Thompson thought as well. As soon as he heard of Nathan's release, he came to L.A. to find him. Can't say that I blame him. No, but vigilantism is not the right approach. What about Nathan? According to the paramedics, he was dead on arrival. Here's the doctor. How's he doing? Is he gonna be all right? His condition is still critical, but he's stabilized. He's gonna be okay. Well, when can we see him? Well, not for a couple of hours. He'll have to stay in intensive care the rest of the afternoon. We'll probably move him to a, a regular room tomorrow, once we're sure no infection will set in. Okay, Doc, thank you. Thank you very, thank very you. much. Thank you, thank you. This you sound pretty positive, right? Yeah. Uh, at some point, I need to get your statements. Do you think you could give me a few minutes right now? Yeah, listen, I need some coffee about you. You want to go to the yeah, coffee shop? Good idea. Okay, okay. come on. Where are you coming with? Listen, I wonder if you would mind if you could give the lieutenant my statement for me. I... Well, uh, Murray, I don't think I can do that. Actually, Murray, it's your statement I really need the most because the fatality is involved. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Hospitals really make me sick to my stomach, you know? I... Uh, we're gonna be in the coffee shop. I mean, you'll be okay there, won't you? Look, it doesn't matter where I'm gonna be, all right? I told you that hospitals make me sick to my stomach. I'm sure the stupid statements can wait a few minutes. Excuse me, is this the Riptide Detective Agency? Uh, yes, it is. Well, uh, at least one-third of it. I'm Nick Ryder. Can I help you? My name is Elaine Warwick. I believe you knew my brother, Nathan Warwick. 
Oh, no, ma'am. I just knew a little bit about him. It's... You only know that he was convicted of raping and murdering a woman for which he served 10 years in prison. My brother did not commit those crimes, Mr. Ryder. He was an innocent man, and now he's dead. I want you to find the person who's guilty. Yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you have a seat up here, okay? Now, let me give you a hand there. Careful. Oh, there you go. Oh, you did that pretty well. Uh, careful. Watch your steps. A little wet up here. Have a seat. Uh... Look, you're gonna have to have to excuse us. Uh, we're a, we're a man short today. I, I got a partner in the hospital, and uh, one of them's not feeling too well. I feel fine, Nick. Oh, hi, Murray. Murray, this is a... Elaine Warwick. Yes, I heard. I'm Murray Bozinski. Miss <sighs> um, Warwick, why do you think your uh, brother was innocent? My brother was. A quiet, soft-spoken man who kept to himself something that naturally aroused suspicion in a small town like Cypress Bay, where we're from. People, people interpret silence to mean conspiracy. Miss Warwick, the victim's blood and hair were found on your brother at the time of his arrest. He had the motive and the opportunity. It was a well-known fact that the Thompson girl was the object of his flirtations. He was the last one to see her alive. How did you know all this, Murray? I accessed the police computer. I wanted to find out how a man could commit the ultimate violation against another human being and get out of prison after only 10 years. My brother was an innocent man. He served 10 years in prison for something he didn't do. Do you hear me? All right. Okay, all right. Yeah, just have a seat right here. Okay. Yeah. The trial was a sham. The evidence fabricated to serve an angry town looking for a scapegoat. There's no way my brother could have raped that woman. Nathan was a homosexual. Was that mentioned at the trial? Why not? Cypress Bay is not Los Angeles, Mr. Ryder. Not every homosexual is ready to ride in gay parades. Nathan was tormented by his situation, unable to deal with it. I was the only person he told, and he swore me to secrecy. Since he knew he was innocent, he just assumed justice would prevail. That the evidence would prove his innocence without ever having to reveal his secret. Well, look, when it was obvious he was going to be convicted, why didn't he say something? I mean, it, it's hard for me to believe that someone would rather be known as a rapist and a murderer over being a homosexual. It's impossible to believe. Okay, Murray. Okay, what? Will That'll you be fine. take this case? Uh, all right, look, I'm going to be real honest with you, okay? You see, there are some cases you got to know when to walk away from, and I think this is one of them. How unfortunate you didn't feel that way when Judd Thompson hired you. My brother might still be alive. Well, that's for you, this should not last. My smiles will disappear as long as you are here. So get well right away. Tra-la-la-boom-dee-ay. Woo! That's very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. Guys, flowers and a get well card would have been enough, you know? This singing telegram was provided by Lieutenant Parisi, who said on her telegram, try not to overuse that arm while reaching for the nurses. <laughs> Thank you. She sent me that. Yeah, that was very considerate of her, don't you think? I guess she knows your tastes better than we thought. Very funny, very funny. I'm sure she was just trying to cheer me up when she saw how depressed I was earlier. Oh, really? She came back here earlier today? Yeah, as a matter of fact, she did. To kiss your boo-boo? To take my statement. It was official business. It barely took ten minutes. I mean, all I had to tell her was that where he saved my life. Maybe all of us. Hey, Marie. Thanks, buddy. She filled me in a little bit about Jed Thompson and that whole mess, too. Yeah, what'd she say? Yeah, nothing. 
that much, really. It's an old Judson. It's like a real prize, huh? And that town he's from, Cypress Bay, it sounds like something out of the kill a mockingbird. They probably still lynch people on a regular basis. Oh, come on, Cody. I mean, we've got to remember the kind of crime we're talking about here. Uh, I can understand why people would, would want to riot, can't you? I mean, especially considering that the criminal's punishment was so disproportionate to his crime. Yeah, I know, Murray. It's just I'm saying that it doesn't sound like a kind of town I'd like to be in if I was trying to prove my innocence. If I didn't have these dumb tubes and wires sticking out of me, I'd want to check this thing out myself. <laughs> been awfully quiet, Murray. Still upset over what happened at the gas station? One of my best friends is lying half dead back there in the hospital, and I'm off gallivanting to some strange town to investigate the life of a convicted criminal. You didn't have to come with me. Well, I guess Cody's all right. I really wasn't much for me to do in King Harbor. I... I'm sure Cody would prefer a pretty nurse wiping his forehead instead of me. <laughs> What's the problem, officer? Out of the car. Excuse me? I said out of the car, both of you. Hands over your head. Why don't you tell me what this is all about? This your car? Yep, registration's in the glove. The see your license. You still haven't told us what we've done, officer. Nick Ryder. Yep. You're a PI from Los Angeles. Yeah, King Harbor. Get in the squad car. What for? For speeding. Let's go. I'm fine. Okay, you just had a bad dream, okay? Take it easy. No, I'm fine. I'm All fine. Right. Okay. What do you think they're gonna do to us now? I don't know. I'll tell you, Elaine Warwick's got good reason to feel the way she does, though. What do you mean by that? Well, look at the way this place is run. We must be the first two guys in history to be thrown in jail for driving into town. No, there's got to be more to it than that. I can't, I can't believe that anybody would treat us like this without a good reason. I'd be anxious to hear what it is. I don't know, boys. Those dogs can't find them, and they ain't out there. But Miss Fleming said she saw him headed out toward the Griswold place. And you know Amy Fleming. She don't miss a trick. I know Amy Fleming never misses her afternoon bourbon. That's what I know. <laughs> it's a wonder we haven't gotten reports of uh, pink elephants heading out to the Griswold place. <laughs> Would someone try driving out of town this time, boys? These are two fellas I was telling you about, Sheriff. I got the driver's license right here. I caught him doing 55 in a 40-mile zone. Yeah, and you're lying through your teeth, too, man. Come on, man. Nick Ryder and Murray Bozinski. Murray Bozinski? You from King Harbor? Yeah. Don't you know who these boys are? At least that one? Damn it, Pitts. Why don't you read the paper once in a while? I promise you it won't make you blind. The 
These two guys are the ones who caught Nathan Warwick. And Bozinski there is the one who nailed it. Well, they were speeding anyway. And it's my job to enforce the law. Get off it, Pitts. You jumped the gun and you know it. So, what brings you boys to town? Well, to tell you the truth... We're writing a book. Yeah, you see, the Warwick case is one of our most interesting cases, so we thought we'd do some research. So, you're going to be in town for a while. <laughs> well, yeah, a couple of days, I guess. Well, that's terrific. Fitz, you go tell Ellie Matthews that we're going to have some special guests at tomorrow's Sunday social. <laughs> Cypress Bay has got itself some celebrities. <laughs> How does it feel to be a local hero? Well, to tell you the truth, it's a little overwhelming. I didn't expect any of this. I guess it would be difficult for um, either of you to uh, understand how this town feels, knowing it never has to worry about Nathan Warwick walking the streets again. How's your other uh, partner doing? What? Oh, I, I, I guess he's going to be fine. When uh, Nathan hit your friend, uh, is that when you uh, fired the shot that uh, killed him? Is that when you uh, fired the shot? Listen, it was self-defense. Do you understand? I shot him out of self-defense. Hey, Mr. Bozinski, you don't have to justify yourself to this town. Don't you see? You're a hero to us. I can't tell you how relieved we are. When we heard that Nathan had been released, there wasn't a per thank you. There wasn't a person in this town that didn't feel a chill run up his spine. And poor old Judd Thompson. Oh, how can you blame a father after all he went through? I just hope that the courts don't come down on him too hard. Well, I'm sure they'll take Judd's emotional state into account. Oh, I hope so. You know, we all felt so lucky to put a lid on that horrible business so fast. You see, Cypress Bay prides itself on being a crime-free community. And we owe it all to Sheriff Kane. Excuse me. Oh, sure. Please, please, I wouldn't want to take you away from your victory celebration. That's not why we came here. It doesn't matter anymore. We came here to help you. Why? What made you change your mind? Well, a couple things, but... Um, I figured I owed your brother this one. Thank you. So you know Elaine Warwick, do you? Yeah, I know her. By the time I leave here, I hope to know everyone in town. I think it's going to make for a more interesting book. According to this account of the night of the murder, the victim, Sarah Thompson, had a note in her skirt pocket that was from Nathan, right? Asking her to meet him at the old dairy barn, and that's where they found her body. Okay. Well, according to Nathan's testimony, he got a call to fix a tractor for someone out on Route 5. When he got there, there wasn't a farm or a tractor. Sounds like a setup to me. Oh, no, I, I, I beg to differ. Right, what, are you I... kidding me? You believe he's the only guy in town who couldn't prove where he was that night? This place wanted to put a noose around his neck, and that's just what they did. No, I don't agree, Nick. You know, personally, I, I think that Nathan's alibi was weak at best. Eh? He was he was a mechanic in this town, right? He, he, he should have known this country like the back of his hand, and yet he claimed not to know that the address on Route 5 didn't exist. I don't buy it. Why not? Why don't you buy it? There's something about this place stinks. Come on. Look, you know what I want to do now? I want to forget about Nathan. I want to check out everything we can on Sarah Thompson, okay? Come on. How you boys coming along? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Not bad at all. Look, let me ask you a question. Are these the only files you have in this case? I'm afraid so. It was pretty open and shut. Uh, not much need for a lot of paperwork. Yeah, we agree. Well, uh, I want to make my rounds. Um, okay. You boys make yourself at home. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Sheriff, very much. Look, 
Nick, I really think that we're wasting our time here. We, we, we've gone over the fa... Right, let's go, come on. What? Come on. What, what, what are you gonna do, huh? I'm looking for information, Murray. But the sheriff already told us we've got all the information right in the files. Murray, there's gotta be more information on this case, all right? Hey, look at this. This little thing here looks like an encyclopedia. Uh, it's on some guy named Pete Jackson, and the most he ever did was get drunk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so what are you going to do? What, are you going to break into the man's desk? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Look, this is the sheriff's office. I know it's a sheriff's You office. are breaking into his private files, and I, I think this that. is morally wrong. I know that. Watch the window, will you? I don't believe this. I don't believe this. All right. It's a list. It's a roster of almost everyone in town. Some of them have stuff written out next to their name. Come here. This is wrong. Okay, here's Nathan's name, see? What's MEC stand for? I don't know. Mechanic, maybe, huh? What does uh, DVT stand for? Well, it's in a different color of ink. Maybe it's some kind of a code word. Where you keep your eyes peeled, okay? I'm going to make a photocopy of this file. You know, this doesn't mean anything. I mean, it could be anything. Murray, all right, relax, relax. Keep an eye on him. Come on. Come on, Nick. Hi, guys. Sheriff Kane's out making his rounds. We're uh, we're gonna go on over to uh, Judge Thompson's tavern if you need to get a hold of us. Okay. Talk to you later. Listen, we appreciate you letting us look through your files, too, okay? Take care of yourself. Thank you. Sarah was a great gal, just like her dad, full of fun, always laughing. I think she's the reason this bar did as well as it did. Why, every guy in town had a crush on Sarah Thompson one time or another. Real heartbreak, huh? No. Sarah never broke any hearts. Till she died. Then she just about broke everyone's. And that animal Warwick abused and murdered her. He deserves to be dead. I understand that uh, Nathan used to flirt a lot with Sarah. Maybe she broke his heart, and that's why I killed her. There ain't no way to figure out that weirdo Nathan. All he ever did was come in here and play pool. Never looked at no one, barely even made eye contact. Might have been up to me, I'd have thrown him out. Sarah's the one who said, just let him stay. I seen that girl try over and over to be friendly towards him, and he never said a word back. Just played pool. Yeah? Phone's for you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, this is Nick. Hello? Hello? Who was it? What did they want? Some guy said if we want information about Nathan, then meet him out at the Dawson farm. set up and I had to give it a shot. What are you talking about? I think we're being set up. That's exactly what happened to Nathan. Somebody called him out in the middle of nowhere. When he was gone, somebody raped and murdered Sarah Thompson and made him the fall guy. You know what? 
Say we get out of here before something happens to somebody else and they decide we're guilty. Nah, you don't know that. I mean, you, you don't know that. It, it seems perfectly logical to me that if somebody wanted to give us information and, and remain anonymous, that they would, they would arrange a meeting for us in an abandoned place like this. Murray, open your eyes. Something's not right around here, okay? Well, then I have yet to see it. And quite frankly, I don't think you've seen it either. I, I think that you're, you're grabbing at straws. You're, you're going on some, some gut reaction that, that, that you can't back up with any scientific proof. Will you forget about science, Murray? None of this makes any sense. It makes a hell of a lot of sense. In the first place, rape is not a crime of sex. Uh -huh. It's a crime of violence. Uh -huh. If Nathan was wrestling with his homosexuality, it's, it's possible that he was trying to consummate something with Sarah to prove to himself otherwise. And having failed at that, he got humiliated and he murdered her. Now, why do you find that scenario so unacceptable? Because if he had failed, she wouldn't have been raped. You got it? Claire, let's get to the car. Come on. doing here anyway came by to play farmer in the Dell but it seemed like the Dawson's weren't home yeah well I wouldn't think so old man Dawson's been dead now about six years nobody lives here everything was sold off at auction and this dozer was brought in just to level the place yeah well the point is deputy that somebody tried to kill us somebody who knew how to drive that thing <laughs> that's about half the town sorry I didn't near your suspects down son well, it looks pretty charred, but we might be able to find us some bones or dentures among the wreckage and identify them. You're not going to find anything because there wasn't a driver on board when this thing went up. <laughs> oh, so you think a ghost was operating it, do you, huh? Oh, please. No, I don't have any idea who was operating it. You got here pretty fast, though, didn't you, Pitts? Boys, all right? All oh, right, yeah. Sheriff. Yeah, we're fine. I got here sooner than I got tied up with a traffic fatality. Old Pete Jackson uh, drunk himself head on into a tree. Is Pete dead? Right so. I wonder if the car didn't catch fire from the fumes of his breath. This doesn't seem like one of Cypress Bay's better days. It sure don't. <laughs> but I'm glad to see that you boys are all right, at least. <laughs> I tell you, we're going to have to get those troublemakers, Pitts. They almost got our heroes. Oh, I don't know about that, Sheriff. It was probably just a, a prank somebody pulled. It was probably just a subtle warning to let the boys know here that they uh, should mind their manners while they're here. Well, let's get right on it, Pitts. It's not neighborly. we Will do, Sheriff. You boys uh, care for a lift back in the town? Oh, no, no. We got our own car. We appreciate it, though. Let's go. See you later. This just looks like a list of names. Why do you think this is important? I'm not sure, but since I found it in a locked drawer, I figured it was something no one wanted to release to the public. What he's saying is uh, we stole it from the police. Judy Atkins, S-T-Y-K-L-P. I don't understand what any of this means. Well, I think the first word is an abbreviation for the person's occupation. You see next to your brother's name, M-E-C? I figured that stood for mechanic. Now, in the original, the first words were in blue ink. Well, what's the DVT mean? DVT, well, those are the words I can't decipher. They were in red ink. 
Yeah. Judy Atkins was a secretary at the bank. Maybe STY means secretary. I wonder what the KLP means, though. Maybe we could go talk to Judy. No, no, no. She's dead. She drowned last summer right before the 4th of July picnic. Okay, this guy, Joe Gotham, CK. That's pretty easy. Joe was a cook, right? Yeah, right at the local diner. Unfortunately, he was also a child molester. Sheriff Kane caught him a couple of years ago out behind the diner, and well, Joe tried to take the sheriff on and ended up dying. You said Joe Gotham was a child molester, right? Huh? Look at the second word. Go to the second word. C-M... C-M-L. Oh, child molester? You think that's an abbreviation for What's that? This? Well, it could be. Look, maybe what we got here is a list of everyone with a criminal record who has died. Well, Judy didn't have a criminal record. She never even got a traffic ticket. Neither did Sarah Thompson. She's on the list here, too. Yeah, yeah she is. She's got an ADT next to her name. Right? Look, maybe this list is simply a, a list of people who have died in town. I thought of that, Murray. Except here's Pete Jackson's name now. He didn't die until just a couple hours ago. He's got a uh, DRK next to his name. Now, my guess is that the DRK stands for drunk, right? Well, isn't that strange? It's like these second words are identifications for someone's bad habits or crimes. I'm guessing, okay? Look at Judy Atkins' name. KLP next to her name. Now, I'm guessing that that means uh, kleptomaniac, right? KLP? With Judy? You said she worked in a bank. Now, yeah. Maybe she was skimming off the top and somebody oh. found out about it. All right, what about Sarah Thompson? The bartender at Judd's Tavern said that she was very friendly with all the men there. That most of the guys in town had crushes on her. Well, and no doubt about it, Sarah was real progressive for Cypress Bay. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe she was so progressive that somebody put a label on her. ADT. Adulteress. Where's Nathan's? What, what does it say next to Nathan? DVT. What's DVT? DVT. DVT. It might refer to a sexual preference. That's impossible. Nobody knew but me. Someone knew. Someone knew or they suspected that's how we ended up on this list. To qualify, all you had to have was a criminal record or have a personality that someone didn't like. For what purpose? For the purpose of knowing who to weed out of town. Are you saying that the police are the ones getting rid of these people simply based on these ID phrases? Um, did you ever see a movie called Dr. Cook's Garden? Did you ever see that movie? Yeah. Yeah, yes, with Bing Crosby. Okay. Now, he was a town doctor who decided to get rid of any of the townspeople who had imperfections. He was playing God. So was someone in this town. Murray? What's the matter, Murray? Where you going? Get out What's of wrong? here. I cannot listen to this nonsense anymore. Well, you don't think I'm onto something here? What? Oh, what yeah, is it? You're onto something, all right. You're onto some obsessive streak trying to prove something that just isn't so. What, because I think we got wackos running this town? What? No, this list. What does this list prove? It certainly doesn't prove that Nathan did not rape and murder Sarah Thompson. It's just theory. It's no, stupid, it's unsubstantiated theory. No, it's not. Yes, Murray. it is. Murray, it's not just a list. It's a death list, okay? Now, somebody in this town, most likely the police department, has already decided the certain fates of people in this you town. Don't people know that. they don't like. You don't know that. It's all guesswork. No, it's not guesswork. It's nonsense. Nathan Warren was guilty. He was a guilty man. He was tried and he was convicted and he served time because he was guilty. Damn it. All right, listen to me, Mr. Self-Righteous. I want you to tell me what makes you so damn positive. What makes you so sure he's guilty? Because I killed him. Do you hear me? I killed him. I shot him and I killed him. Be right back. Want to talk? Well, I do. I want to tell you about this sergeant I had in Vietnam. I don't want to hear it. This guy. This guy was a craggy old joker. He had been to Korea. And he was already on his third tour of Asia. And when I first met him, I thought he was... Uh, I thought he was one of these hotshot soldier types, you know, one of these guys who thinks war is neat and killing people is even neater. 
remember this one particular night before we were going out on our first patrol. I found him in his Jeep. He was crying. And I went over to him and I said, you all right? What's going on? You, what's the matter, you know? He looked up at me with these big tears in his eyes and he said, Lieutenant, there are three turning points in a man's life. His first woman. First time he loses a loved one. The first time he has to kill a man. He said, now those first two, he said, those first two aren't that bad, but that third one, that, that third one's a tough one. He said, no matter how many times you have to do it again, it's, it stays tough. He said, because if it ever got easy, that's when you'd know it's time to lay down your sword. Next day on patrol, I knew what that sergeant was talking about. Where this experience is never going to leave you. It's something you're going to have to deal with, come to terms with, find your own peace. I killed an innocent man. Maybe so. But you did what you had to do. Maybe because of that, Cody's still alive. Say we go give him a call and see how he's doing. All right. Come on now, open wide. You can do it. Oh, Cody, the sooner you start eating something, the sooner you'll get out of here. Right. I don't like mashed cauliflower. I never had. Why can't I have a steak? <laughs> okay. Why don't we play the airplane game? Spoon is the airplane. Your mouth is the hanger, and it opens wide. I want the plane to crash. Oh. Oh, no, wait, I'll get it. No, I, I can, it. honestly, I can get it from you. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. It's okay. uh, hello? Hel hello, uh, is Cody there? Uh, oh, hi, Nick, it's, uh, it's Joanna. Cody's right here, I'll put him on. Before you put Cody on, I want you to do me a favor, right? Sure, if I can. Okay, I want you to run a check on the local police department up here, okay? Now, their names are Emil Kane, Samuel Pitts, and Charles Hanks, all right? Listen, I really want you to check into this Pitts guy for me, okay? Okay, no problem. Here's Cody. Sheriff Kane? Hello, Sheriff. This is Susan Duchow on the switchboard. I'm calling about a phone call coming out of Elaine Warwick's house, just like you asked me to. Is Elaine making the call? No, it's that Nick Ryder fella, the one writing the book. Tell me what they said, Susan. Oh, Cody. Hi, Lieutenant. I'm eating. Look, see, here's my spoon. Uh, Cody, Cody, uh, do you know how I can get in touch with Nick and Murray? Yeah, I think so. Why? What's the matter? Remember those police officers Nick wanted me to run down? Yeah. It says here that Sheriff Kane was in a psychiatric hospital in Texas for two years. Yeah. Cody, what are you doing? Gotta get up there to Nick and Murray. Are you crazy? You hurt. Uh, they could be in trouble. Ow! Ow! Oh. You can barely walk, and just let me handle it, okay? And tell me where they are. Okay. I'll tell you, this place gives me the creeps. I feel like everybody's staring at us. You know what you mean? Because we know something they don't. Try to relax. We'll be all right. How are you boys doing today? Good, Sheriff. Sure. How about you? I hate to be bothering you like this. Uh, I know you must be real busy with that book and all, but I was wondering if you might help me out. Sure, what's the problem? Well, it's those darn troublemakers we've been having. You know, the ones that we think tried to hurt you this afternoon? Oh, really? What, what about them? Well, me and my deputies think we might have come up with a trap. And we thought maybe a couple of private detectives from the big city might uh, tell us if it's any good. Well, why don't you go ahead and run them by us? Well, uh, why don't you come on over to the station with me? It'd be a lot easier to do it there. I've got the squad car parked right out front. Oh, well, I...
Sure. Climb in, fellas. I said, climb in, fellas. Well, the way I look at it, those blasted troublemakers got a hold of you three and killed you. <laughs> It'll be a tragedy indeed. The town will mourn your deaths. <laughs> well, maybe not yours, Elaine. How long have these troublemakers been around, King? As long as you've been weeding out the bad blood in town? Cypress Bay is a mighty safe place to live, Mr. Ryder. That kind of safety nobody needs. How did you find out about Nathan? One day, when Doc Henderson was a little too high on his own drugs, he told me. <laughs> so you're the one who murdered and raped Sarah Thompson, aren't you, Sheriff? The woman was a tramp. I knew it wouldn't be long before she'd be having liaisons with every married man in town. That would have presented a real problem, right? You would have had to kill every man she slept with. Of course, maybe, maybe you've already done that. Like I said before, Mr. Ryder, Cypress Bay is a mighty safe place to live. Everybody out. You all right? You're gonna have a tough time explaining this one. We got friends in LA, they'll be up here to investigate this. Well, let's hope they're more successful than you were. Elaine, no! Mike, get the gun! Get the gun! Get the gun! What you done, boy? Have you any idea what you done? Just clean up some of the trash in this town, Sheriff. Come on, everybody, let's go. Hi, huh? hey, Murray. Come on, this is my first official day out in the sun. I don't want to miss Grace, a single race. Look, 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 hot shot. You're going to be huh? careful with that arm. Yes, right? I'm going to be careful. Come on. Is that sling going to give you a bad tan line? No, come on. No. I'm not that vain. All, all right? right. Anyway, you know how many uh, sympathetic bikini-clad women this is going oh, to attract? Stop. Let's go. Stop. Come on, guys. Hey, hey Murray. Murray. Come on, man. We're out of here. Come on, Murray. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I'll be right with you guys. I uh, I misplaced my sunglasses, and I think they're in here somewhere. I'd like to look for them. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Up, we'll see you up top. Okay. It's not like riding a horse, Murray. You know, uh, when somebody falls off a horse, first thing they're told to do is get right back on. Because if they don't, they'll always be afraid. I didn't want to get you confused because that rule really doesn't apply here. Can't even touch it. Don't expect to be able to do that anytime soon. Don't you ever be ashamed if you can never do it again. <laughs> 